Hello everybody, welcome back to your second JavaScript tutorial. Going to go through a real quick PowerPoint again and then we're going to start programming in JavaScript or scripting or whatever you want to call it. So first, to start, you should have a foundation in HTML, which stands for Hypertext Markup Language. I did a little series over that. We're going to be getting into a little bit more than what I taught, but if you want to learn about that, you can check that out or research it online. Or you can just copy what I write if you don't feel like learning about it. That's fine, too. So the reason I say you should have foundation in this is because a lot of web development languages interact with each other, including all of these. So I've talked about a lot of these. And to continually reteach HTML in every single series would get super annoying. So I did a series over HTML, and that's all for now. So all right. We will be using the HTML5 doc type. If you don't know what that is, that's okay. Basically, this goes at the very beginning of your HTML document. This it allows browsers to know we're using HTML5, and it'll put it in standards mode rather than quirks mode. I think that's how it's pronounced. If you don't know much about that, that's okay. Basically, this will tell the web browser to use HTML5 features and not use old browsers. Feed. Don't view the web page in an old browser's technique or whatever. So hopefully that hopefully that makes sense. Basically if you want your website to be in newer browser standards, then put this HTML5 doc type at the beginning of your HTML document. So this is what our entire HTML page is going to look like. We have this doc type at the top like we talked about. Then we set the HTML language. We have an HTML tag and we set the language by typing that. Then we have the head, and then within the head, we have a meta tag with character set UTF-8, title, and we can enter a title here, basically anything we want. Then we link to a style sheet, which we're not really going to do that much yet, but if you need to link to a style sheet, this is what it would look like. And then we end the head, and then we have the body. Our HTML goes here. To announce to the web browser that we're going to have JavaScript in our code, we enclose all of our JavaScript code within script tags. So this is what script tags look like. You've probably seen those somewhere maybe, I don't know, maybe not. Well, there's two options, inline JavaScript, which basically we just put the code within the HTML, and that's all. And then we also have external JavaScript, which we actually link to a different JavaScript file and the HTML brings that into that specific page and uses that source code again in a reference to the original file. So basically it gets just put it gets put into the file we're referencing it from. So we tell where we want to get the JavaScript file and then that's all. So this will reference another JavaScript file to be used within our web page. All right, so we can have multiple script tags within our HTML if we need JavaScript at different points in our web page, although that usually don't do that. And when you do, you can't use inline and external at the same time. So if you look here, I have a script and we're referencing to an external JavaScript file in the JS folder named script.js. And then we have JavaScript code within the script tags. Well, that's two types of JavaScript referencing or type or coding and we don't want that. This call this is not going to work out right. So there's two types of paths when we're referencing files for JavaScript. We have absolute paths and relative paths. Absolute is an exact path from the root of your website. So if I'm on calebcurry.com forward slash blogs forward slash JavaScript forward slash cool script number one JS, that's an exact path. The root, this is the root of my website, calebcurry.com or just forward slash. There's also relative paths. This will find the file in relation to the file you're including it in. So if I'm working on calebcurry.com forward slash blogs, I can include a JavaScript file relatively by just putting forward slash JavaScript coolscript1.js. Basically, Java, uh, HTML is going to know that this is basically a continuation of right here and this is how it's going to 
connect it relatively. But you don't have to type in the entire calebcurry.com and blah, 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 so forth. So we do not have to include calebcurry.com forward slash blogs. If I change this and I'm, on, and I'm on a set of blogs, I'm on videos, well, we might not have this JavaScript file within this relative path. I spelled videos wrong, but that's okay. As well as uh, this, we may change our domain name to awesome.com. Well, now this is going to work because it's a relative path. Basically, it looks relative to this. But if we had an absolute path, we'd have to change this entire source because it would no longer be calebcurry.com. It would be awesome.com. So let's try this in JavaScript. First, let's download Notepad++. You can download it at this website or Google search it. Over here on the side, click download. Scroll down here, Notepad++ installer, and it'll start downloading. I already have it downloaded and installed, but basically you get the point. I'm going to cancel this, and I am going to open Notepad++. So this is what Notepad++ looks like. You'll get something like a change log pop up. Basically, we're just going to file new and X out of the change log. So now we're on a new file. We're going to file save and we're going to put it on the desktop. This is going to be index.html. Yes. So now we have an index page on our desktop. And if we click it, it opens in a web browser. If it doesn't, you're going to have to open with and so I mean not open. You have to open with, not share with, and just select a web browser. So, as you can see, there's nothing really on here. That's because we haven't done anything with the HTML. So we can really quickly create an HTML document. I guess we could say doc type HTML. I'm going to have a script. And within here, I can put my inline JavaScript. So I could say something like Save it, file, save, or just control S, which is what I pressed. Then open the web browser, refresh, F5, and you can see it says, hey. So that's an example of inline JavaScript. Well, external JavaScript, that works like this. We could create a new file folder and say JS. And then within here, within eight, we can create a save this within that folder, let me find it, and then we can name it script.js. So now we have a, a JavaScript file within this JavaScript folder. We can reference this within our index page by within the script tag saying source equals and then two quotation marks js forward slash script.js and then we need to write some code obviously so document write and then we can open this in a web browser by clicking launch in chrome and okay you can see here's a problem it doesn't work right exactly like we wanted to to that's because we have to actually use the index page since that is where we are referencing it from. So if I refresh this, you can see it stays the same. And I can change our JavaScript page. And then if I update it, you can see it changes. Make sure you save it each time and so forth. So that's all I have to say in this video, and I will see you in the next.